Welcome to my channel on the best of fantasy. Well, I did it. I finished the last book in The Banished Lands by John Gwynn, and that would be a time of courage. This is the conclusion to the trilogy of Blood and Bone, and this, of course, is a sequel trilogy to The Faithful and the Fallen. So in all, you have seven books in The Banished Lands written by John Gwynn. And I feel like I'm at the end of a very significant journey here, having finished the last book in The Banished Lands. And so I thought rather than the standard review, I would do something a little bit different. I want to try to express why I love John Gwynn's The Faithful and the Fallen and Of Blood and Bone, the books in the Banished Lands, and what I got from this journey. And I'm sure that many of you who are fans of Gwynn's writing will know what I'm talking about. I hope that a lot of what I'm going to say will resonate with you. And perhaps if you're someone who's on the fence about whether or not to try Gwynn's books, uh, maybe you'll hear something that will be of interest to you as well. So, and I will keep a, a, a spoiler-free review, very brief, of A Time of Courage for the very end of this video, but everything here will be spoiler-free. Also, I want to mention that I'm going to be in a discussion with the usual war band. Uh, those of us who've been discussing Gwyn's books all along in The Faithful and the Fallen and Of Blood and Bone, and the last of our discussions will be on the Fantasy Network, uh, Jimmy's channel. So I am very excited to be in that discussion, and all the spoilers are going to come out in that discussion. So while I'm keeping this spoiler-free, I will be having a good time talking with my friends about all the spoilery stuff when we have that discussion, and that will be coming up fairly soon. So look for announcements from Jimmy on that one. But uh, so... Let's get started here on what I love about The Faithful and the Fallen. I usually, if you know the channel at all, you probably know that I usually lean toward uh, books that make me think. I do love books that make me think. Gwyn's books make me feel. They make me feel a lot. Uh, it's, it's amazing how some writers are just so skilled at appealing to the emotions. And I feel like um, Gwyn's books are an emotional journey, a journey of the heart. And I would have to say that of all the authors I've been reading in the last few years, uh, two of them have been especially good at tugging at my heart. One is Steven Erickson and the other is John Gwyn. And Gwyn is just so good at providing those emotionally resonant moments. And I had one, re, uh, one uh, viewer who expressed it really well, and I, I love the way that she put it, talking about The Faithful and the Fallen specifically, but uh, uh, as, as having a lot of heart, and this is something that I completely agree with. Truth and courage. These are words that, that resonate. They are simple, honest values expressed in accessible prose. And this is prose that sometimes rises to the level of poignant beauty as well. So I do enjoy Gwyn's prose. But it is that emotional appeal, I think, that is the, the real heart and the strength of his books. And I'll just give a couple examples of tropes that Gwyn does really well. And you will find when you start The Faithful and the Fallen, particularly, that the books are fairly tropey in a very classical fantasy sense. And I mean that in a very positive way because Gwyn does handle the tropes really well and later on starts surprising you in terms of what he does with them. But a couple tropes that I think he does brilliantly. One would be the found family. Gwyn writes a lot of misfits characters, people who are uh, alone in the world or, or, or having trouble finding their place, finding their tribe. And the story can be the process of them finding a family of sorts. And it is beautifully done. It is some of the most emotional moments in the stories for me have been those when a character realizes his or her place within a family, a found family. Uh, so Gwen does that really, really well. And if that's something you enjoy in your reading, then these books should probably appeal to you. Another one that Gwen does masterfully, maybe better than anyone, is Animal Companions. Animal Companions 
are a prominent part of the faithful and the fallen and of blood and bone. And they're just so, such memorable characters from Storm in the faithful and the fallen and Kraff uh, to in a blood and bone to Friend and Hammer and Rab and, and there are just so many others. Uh, just so, such great animal companions. And the bond between the animal and the human is something that Gwyn does beautifully and it's so emotional. Uh, it is such a, a wonderful thing to see the love and the friendship that develops between these characters. And friendship is something along with found family that Gwyn does marvelously in here and, and what we get from friendship, particularly in a world that is hostile and, and difficult to navigate one's way through. So I'd just like to read a, a passage here that gives a taste of, uh, I think, how Gwyn handles this, uh, the idea of found family and animal companions, all leading to this, this idea of friendship, which is so central to all of the books in The Banished Lands. And friendship as the thing that helps us to get through our struggles, helps us to get through life. So I'll just read this here, and uh, I won't say who's saying it. I don't want to have any spoilers here, but uh, this is a passage that doesn't give anything away, I think. We are just people, all of us the same. Flawed, fragile, stubborn, angry, happy. And life treats no one differently. We are born, and we live, and then we die. It's what we do while we are here that counts. And if we can be called friend, then we are lucky indeed. And you can see it's very simple, uh, but very beautiful passage. And a very, I think, something that we can all identify with. And Gwyn does this sort of thing really, really well. Another thing that he does, I think, a, a real strength of his books would be the action. I mean, this is no secret for people who love Gwyn's books. They are action-packed. They are page-turners. And he does small-scale fights to epic battles. And he, in real life, Gwyn does participate in reenactments. And uh, he, you can tell, has done a lot of research. He knows uh, about the weapons, how they're handled, how they feel in, in a person's, you know, how tired your arm gets from holding up a shield, what it feels like to have chainmail on, how heavy it is, and how it affects your movement. He's just really, really good with this stuff. And so that is something I appreciate as both a fantasy fan and a, a history aficionado. Uh, it's something that I really enjoy that Gwyn does really, really well. But he does these small-scale fights and these epic battles. Just breathtaking, really. Some great stuff. And one thing that I love about his battles is the, the cleverness sometimes of the tactics that he'll have in there. So you'll get that boots on the ground view. You'll get the character perspective in the midst of the battle and it's chaos and it's crazy and, and it's just, you know, from one character perspective to another and it's just, it's a really well done thing. But you also get a sense of the larger tactics. So Gwyn will zoom out sometimes and give you the aerial view, so to speak. And that helps you understand sort of the, the method behind all the madness there. Uh, or at least because battles tend to uh, degrade into chaos under most circumstances. But, but sometimes, you know, it's cool to see a good plan come together. So that is a, a, an aspect of Gwyn's battles that I enjoy very much. There's also, in, you know, speaking of battles and all that, there's a kind of honesty to his writing, an authenticity that I appreciate very much. And this is really having to do with the fact that when you're dealing with a lot of violence, you're going to have people dying. And he is not someone who flinches from, you know, beloved characters meeting their end. And in sometimes ways that will surprise you. You don't see it coming. Um, so characters die. Beloved characters die. And, and that really raises the stakes in Gwyn's books. There is a, 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 you know, anytime a battle takes place, you're kind of biting your nails a bit because you don't want your favorite character to die. And, and you have a real sense that that could happen. So you're right in there along with the characters. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's, it's really, <laughs> it's nail biting. And, and you're on the edge of your seat a lot of the time when you're reading uh, one of Gwyn's books. So if you like that kind of fast pace, you like all that action, he does it really well. 
Uh, and he does it in a way that I think is pretty authentic uh, in terms of, the, yes, there are losses, right? And, uh, and you're not always sure uh, about who's going who's gonna to perish, uh, who you're going to lose next. So that creates a lot of suspense, and it's, it's really well done. It keeps you turning the pages. So, you know, speaking of, you know, character losses and that sort of thing, um, there is a lot of tragedy. There is a lot of loss in the Banished Lands. There's a, it's, there's a harshness to life there. And I also do find that compelling, this struggle of life. It is a big part of Gwyn's storytelling. And I think it's true that, uh, you know, the longer you're around, the more you realize that life is going to knock you around. I and mean, that's the way it is. There are going to be losses and there are going to be tragedies and we might even lose. In fact, in a sense, we are pretty much doomed since mortality is looming in front of us. And there's not ultimately anything you can do about that. <laughs> that is a fact of life. And it can make you feel small and insignificant. It can make you feel powerless. It can make you feel alone and, and lost. But the thing is, in these stories, what we see, I think, is it's something that's very important for us to see. We see people struggling in spite of the fact that we are facing this certain doom. And it's courage. It's the courage of facing certain doom that we see repeatedly in Gwyn's stories. And I think that's something that is actually very helpful, <laughs> very important for us in our own lives to face things with courage uh, as best we can. And that is something I really love. That is something that resonates with me that I see all the way from old English poetry to a lot of fantasy. And it's something that Gwyn does particularly well. He's really in tune with this theme of facing certain doom with as much courage as you can muster. I'll, I'll just read another passage here that for me illustrates that concept just beautifully. There's another character talking. I'm not going to say who, but here it is. A wise woman said this to me once. There is much in life that is beyond our control. Events that sweep us up and along actions that wrap us tight in their consequences. Stop raging about the things you cannot change. Just be true to yourself and do what you can do. Love those worth loving and to the other world with the rest of it. That is all any of us can do. And you hear there a couple things. You hear courage in the face of certain doom, but you also hear about the camaraderie. You hear about the friendship. You hear about the love. And this is something that Gwyn does so masterfully and beautifully in his books. It's that love for other people, the people we find ourselves with in this journey and creating those bonds. And that's what makes it meaningful. That's what gives it its beauty. And that comes across so, so well in Gwyn's writing. So that is something that I absolutely love. And, and, and if you're hearing a kind of a, I guess, a classical fantasy vibe in all of this, then I think that is uh, actually quite deliberate. Gwyn is uh, very well read, you can tell, in classical fantasy. He's, he's read his Tolkien, absolutely. Um, and there is an element to a, a sort of a good and evil kind of thing going on in, in the Banished Lands, absolutely, in a classical fantasy sense. And he handles it really well. But it's also very modern at the same time. The chapters are fairly short. The pacing, as I said, is very fast. You get perspective characters and they, they change fairly frequently. Uh, so all of that feels very modern at the same time. And they can be very grim. They can be very grim, these books. I wouldn't call them at all grimdark, <laughs> whatever that means. Uh, but they can be very tough. And as I said before, full of loss. And I would also say that in addition to all that, Gwyn does introduce moral complexity at times. So he gives us flawed characters trying their very best to do good in the world. And he gives us characters doing evil as well, who sometimes have understandable motives behind their actions. So that is something that I appreciate. Particularly, I think he's been doing that more in his later books, more and more. But he, he does have some nuance in there as well. And so I, I do enjoy that and, and gives us some surprises. As I said before, with some of the tropes, he, he does kind of subvert some of the tropes 
in some interesting ways in, in his writing. So, uh, and I mentioned Lord of the Rings. Uh, he has, uh, I think, some great inspirations in his books that absolutely I share an enthusiasm for. Uh, I also love the fact that Gwyn gives a lot of nods to Celtic myths and legends in the Banished Lands. And there, yeah, there's some, some of the Old Norse stuff as well, just hints of it here and there. And there's some Roman influence, uh, particularly in The Faithful and the Fallen. And there's also uh, some, uh, I would guess, uh, some classical stuff in the sense that you have a lot of uh, Milton's Paradise Lost as a major, major source of inspiration for what happens in the Banished Lands in some interesting ways, although Gwyn definitely goes in his own direction there. But taking Milton's Paradise Lost as a starting point um, is, is kind of an interesting thing. So I would, I'd actually highly recommend reading Paradise Lost in and of itself, but also if you want to understand The Faithful and the Fallen, I think you should read Paradise Lost, absolutely. But uh, just love the Celtic stuff, especially in there. Um, I'm a big fan. I, I learned Welsh when I was younger, and I love seeing the Welsh and the Irish in there. Um, so it's, it's just a kind of a cool thing, and, and he is not shy about nod, giving the nods to some of his influences, including as well some films and things like that. So that's just a lot of fun. There's a real fun element to Gwyn's writing as well. Uh, and there's even some humor here and there, uh, which is important with all that loss and tragedy. So, um, so it's really great stuff. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's, that's what I think of Gwyn's writing and why I love it. And hopefully that makes sense to those of you who have read these books and maybe will appeal to some of you who have not yet. And just so what did I think of A Time of Courage, this final book in The Faithful and the Fallen? Well, I hope it's clear by now that I, <laughs> that I loved it. And uh, I would say that much of what I said about the Banished Lands in general applies to A Time of Courage. Uh, it is a, a fast, has a fast pace, and it is packed with breathtaking, epic battle sequences. Uh, also, lots of just smaller level action. Uh, there is loss, and there is tragedy. And um, there's also perseverance and beauty, and triumph. And so I think that A Time of Courage is an absolutely fitting conclusion to The Banished Lands. I loved some of the characters that Gwyn brought to life for me here. I think Drem might actually be my favorite character in The Banished Lands. Drem is a wonderful character, nuanced and lovable and... I just loved his journey from beginning to end here in, in this trilogy. Uh, he felt like a real person to me by the end. So it was just a wonderful thing to, to get to know this character. And I also really enjoyed Riv and Bleda. And uh, same things, really. Their, their journeys were tremendous and uh, full of meaning. And uh, there were some just some beautiful moments with these characters, beautiful moments with them. And uh, so they're also great supporting characters in here. And uh, it could go on and on and on talking about all these characters, but I, I hope that one day Gwyn might return even to the Banished Lands. Uh, who knows? Right now he is engaged though, I think in, in uh, his Bloodsworn trilogy. Uh, the first book, The Shadow of the Gods, is one that I consider to me <laughs> actually my favorite book by Gwyn so far, actually. So that's a pretty high endorsement for that. Now, I love the Old Norris influence that he's included in there. So, so there's plenty to look forward to whether or not Gwyn uh, returns to the Banished Lands. So that makes me happy. Uh, but if he ever does write something again in the Banished Lands, I will be sure to rush out and buy it and read it. Uh, so, so that concludes what I have to say about the Banished Lands and A Time of Courage and I appreciate you watching this. And if you're interested in more content like this, please consider liking and subscribing. And I absolutely love to hear your comments in the comment section. So please do feel free to comment. All right, until next time.